Welcome to Bedtime Whispers, where darkness comes to life and nightmares become reality. Join us on this terrifying journey through the unknown, where every creak and every shadow conceals a terrifying mystery. Here we go. Welcome to the Malevolent Carnival, a place where nightmares come to life and terror reigns supreme. Once a thriving amusement park, this carnival has fallen into darkness and decay. Twisted and demonic looking rides, sinister clowns, and freaks of nature now haunt the abandoned midway. As you wander through the empty carnival, you feel a malevolent presence in the air. Your senses are heightened, and your heart races with fear. You hear whispers in the shadows, and catch glimpses of glowing eyes watching you from afar. The air is thick with the stench of decay and the remnants of evil. The Malevolent Carnival is a place of horror and malevolence, where nothing is as it seems, and danger lurks around every corner. This book will take you on a journey through the dark and twisted world of the Malevolent Carnival. You will discover the secrets and mysteries that lie hidden within its walls and you will face the malevolent forces that seek to claim your soul. The haunted history of the malevolent carnival. The malevolent carnival has a long and sordid history filled with tragedy, violence, and malevolence. It was once a place of joy and happiness. A place where families came to have fun and make memories. However, that all changed one fateful night. On a dark and stormy evening, a group of carnies gathered together to perform a dark and ancient ritual. They summoned a malevolent entity, hoping to gain power and control over the carnival. However, they underestimated the evil they had unleashed. The entity took over the carnival corrupting everything in its path. The rides became twisted and demonic, and the clowns and performers became sinister and malevolent. The carnival's visitors began to disappear, and those who remained were never seen again. The authorities tried to shut down the carnival, but every time they tried, they were mad with resistance and malevolence. Eventually, the carnival was abandoned, left to rot in the darkness and decay. However, the evil of the malevolent carnival did not die with its abandonment. It continued to linger, waiting for unsuspecting visitors to wander into its grasp. The malevolent carnival became a place of legend whispered about in hushed tones by those who knew of its existence. The malevolent carnival remains a place of terror and malevolence, a place where nightmares come to life. In this chapter, we will explore the history of the malevolent carnival and the events that led to its downfall. We will delve deep into the past uncovering the secrets and mysteries that surround the carnival. The malevolent carnival was first established in the early 1900 as. It was a small amusement park that quickly gained popularity among the locals. The carnival featured traditional rides and attractions, including a ferris wheel, a roller coaster, and a carousel. Over time, the carnival grew in size and popularity. More attractions were added, 
and the carnival became a thriving hub of entertainment. However, all of this changed on the night of the dark ritual. The group of carnies who performed the ritual were seeking power and control over the carnival. They believed that by summoning a malevolent entity, they could gain the upper hand and take over the carnival. However, they were wrong. The entity that they summoned was far more powerful and malevolent than they could have ever imagined. It took over the carnival, corrupting everything in its path. The rides became twisted and demonic, and the performers and clowns became sinister and malevolent. The malevolent carnival became a place of fear and terror, a place where the darkness reigned supreme. Visitors to the carnival would disappear without a trace and those who remained were never seen again. The authorities tried to shut down the carnival, but every time they tried, they were met with resistance and malevolence. Eventually, the carnival was abandoned, left to rot in the darkness and decay. Today, the malevolent carnival remains a place of legend whispered about in hushed tones by those who know of its existence. It is a place of fear and terror, a place where the darkness lurks in the shadows. In the next chapter, we will explore the sideshow of the malevolent carnival. We will take a closer look at the freaks, oddities, and curiosities that can be found within its walls. We will delve into the dark and twisted world of the malevolent carnival sideshow and uncover its secrets and mysteries. The sideshow of the malevolent carnival is a place of darkness and horror. It is home to a collection of freaks, oddities, and curiosities that are both fascinating and terrifying. In this chapter, we will take a closer look at the dark world of the sideshow and the creatures that dwell within. As you enter the sideshow, you are greeted by a strange and unsettling atmosphere. The air is thick with the scent of decay and the sound of creaking metal and distant screams fills your ears. You can hear the whispering of the freaks as they prepare for their performances, and the rustling of the curtains as they hide behind them, waiting for their cure. The sideshow is home to a collection of creatures that are both fascinating and horrifying. There is the bearded lady, whose long and flowing beard reaches down to her knees. There is the Siamese twins, joined at the hip and unable to be separated. And there is the contortionist, whose body is so flexible that she can twist and turn in ways that seem impossible. But there are also creatures that are much more sinister. There is the half-man, half-beast, who snarls and growls at anyone who comes too close. There is the woman with the snake's tongue, who hisses and spits venom at those who dare to cross her. And there is the creature with the glowing red eyes, who lurks in the shadows, waiting for its next victim. The performers in the sideshow are just as twisted and malevolent as the creatures they display. They revel in the fear and terror of their audience, taunting and tormenting them at every turn. They are not human, but something else entirely. Something that has been corrupted by the darkness of the carnival as you leave the sideshow. You can't help but feel relieved to be out of that dark and twisted world. 
but at the same time, you know that the creatures and performers of the sideshow will haunt your nightmares for years to come. In the next chapter, we will explore the rides and attractions of the malevolent carnival. We will take a closer look at the twisted and demonic versions of the traditional rides and the dangers that lurk within them. We will delve deeper into the darkness of the carnival and uncover its secrets and mysteries. The rides of the malevolent carnival are unlike any you have ever experienced. They are twisted and demonic versions of the traditional rides, designed to terrorize and torment those brave enough to ride them. In this chapter, we will take a closer look at the rides and attractions of the carnival and the dangers that lurk within. The Ferris Wheel, a staple of any carnival, is transformed in the malevolent carnival into a towering monstrosity with glowing red eyes and sharp metallic claws. The seats are made of rusted metal and seem to creak and groan with each turn. As you ascend to the top of the Ferris Wheel, you can see the other rides of the carnival, each one more terrifying than the last. The Roller Coaster, a thrill ride enjoyed by millions, is transformed into a nightmare of twists and turns that leave you dizzy and disoriented. The cars are shaped like demonic creatures with razor-sharp teeth and their eyes glow with an otherworldly light. The screams of the riders mix with the cackling laughter of the carnival workers, creating a cacophony of terror that echoes through the night. The bumper cars, a fun and light-hearted ride, are transformed into a brutal battle between riders. The cars are shaped like monstrous creatures with jagged spikes and razor-sharp blades. The goal is no longer to simply bump into other riders, but to destroy them completely. The winner is the last one standing, bloodied and bruised but triumphant. And then there is the Haunted House, a classic carnival attraction that becomes a living nightmare in the malevolent carnival. The walls are lined with pulsing flesh and writhing tentacles, and the air is thick with the stench of decay. The creatures that inhabit the haunted house are not simply animatronics or actors in costumes, but real monsters that will chase you through the twisting corridors and refuse to let you escape. The rides and attractions of the malevolent carnival are not for the faint of heart. They are designed to push you to your limits and beyond, to leave you trembling with fear and wondering if you will ever escape. In the next chapter, we will explore the dark secrets of the carnival and the mysteries that lie hidden within its twisted corridors. Behind the twisted rides and malevolent atmosphere of the carnival lies a deeper darkness, one that few dare to uncover. In this chapter, we will delve into the dark secrets of the malevolent carnival and the mysteries that lie hidden within. Legend has it that the malevolent carnival was once a place of joy and celebration, a beacon of light in a world of darkness. But that all changed one fateful night when a powerful sorcerer took over the carnival and twisted it to his own dark purposes. The sorcerer's name was Zoltar, and he was rumored to possess great powers of dark magic. He used his powers to transform the carnival into a malevolent 
realm of fear and terror, and to lure unsuspecting victims to their doom. Zolter is said to still hunt the carnival to this day. His malevolent presence felt in every corner of the park. Some say that he can be seen wandering the deserted grounds at night, his eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. But Zolter is not the only dark presence in the carnival. There are whispers of other creatures that inhabit the park, creatures that were once human but have been transformed by the sorcerer's dark magic. Visitors to the carnival are warned to stay away from the shadows, for it is there that the creatures lurk, waiting to pounce on unsuspecting victims. Those who have encountered them describe them as twisted and deformed, with glowing eyes and razor-sharp claws. And then there are the rumors of the carnival's ultimate goal. A sinister plot that involves the sacrifice of innocent souls to fuel Zolter's dark magic. No one knows for sure if these rumors are true, but the feeling of malevolence that hangs over the carnival is enough to make anyone wonder. In the next chapter, we will follow a group of brave adventurers as they explore the mysteries of the malevolent carnival and uncover the truth about its dark past. After hearing the rumors of the malevolent carnival's dark past, a group of brave adventurers decided to investigate. They were determined to uncover the truth about the carnival and put an end to the malevolent forces that had taken it over. The group consisted of five individuals. A seasoned detective named Jack, a journalist named Sarah, a historian named Professor Jones, a spiritual medium named Rachel and a local resident named Mike, who had grown up near the carnival and knew its layout well. They arrived at the carnival just as the sun was setting, and immediately felt the malevolent atmosphere that hung over the park. The rides were twisted and demonic looking, and the shadows seemed to come alive with a feeling of malevolence. The group split up to explore the park, with Jack and Mike heading to the Ferris Wheel, Sarah and Professor Jones investigating the carnival's history, and Rachel attempting to make contact with any spirits that might be present. As Jack and Mike rode the Ferris Wheel, they noticed something strange. The Ferris Wheel seemed to be moving on its own. Despite the fact that there was no one operating it, they quickly climbed down and reported their findings to the rest of the group. Sarah and Professor Jones had been digging through old archives and had discovered something shocking. The malevolent carnival had been the site of a number of mysterious disappearances over the years with dozens of people vanishing without a trace. Rachel had made contact with a spirit that claimed to be a victim of the carnival's dark magic. The spirit warned the group to leave the park before it was too late. But the group was determined to press on. As the night wore on, the group encountered a number of terrifying creatures lurking in the shadows, but they were undeterred and continued their investigation. In the next chapter, the group will uncover a shocking revelation that will change everything they thought they knew about the malevolent carnival. The group of investigators continued to delve deeper into the malevolent carnival, determined to uncover the dark secrets that lay hidden within. As they explored, 
they began to notice that the carnival was not just a collection of demonic rides and twisted attractions, but a living, breathing entity with a malevolent will of its own. The carnival seemed to be aware of their presence and began to taunt and torment them at every turn. Strange voices echoed through the empty halls, and the group could hear the creaking and groaning of the rides, as if they were alive and hungry for fresh victims. Despite the growing danger, the group pressed on. They had come too far to turn back now, and they were determined to see their investigation through to the end. As they approached the heart of the carnival, they could feel the malevolent energy growing stronger. The air was thick with the stench of decay and corruption, and the shadows seemed to writhe with sinister life. Suddenly, they found themselves standing on a patch of unholy ground, a twisted, corrupted version of what had once been a beautiful flower garden. The plants were withered and diseased, and the soil was dark and putrid. As they looked around, they saw that the carnival's power seemed to be emanating from this spot. The ground itself seemed to be alive, writhing and pulsing with dark energy. Rachel stepped forward, her hands raised in an attempt to make contact with any spirits that might be present. Suddenly, the ground began to shake, and the air was filled with an otherworldly roar. The group braced themselves for an attack, but nothing happened. As the shaking subsided, they looked around to see that the unholy ground had vanished, replaced by a pool of inky blackness. The carnival seemed to have sensed their presence and was not happy about their intrusion. In the next chapter, the group will face their greatest challenge yet as they try to survive the carnival's wrath. As the investigators stood in shock at the disappearance of the unholy grounds, they realized that they had awoken something dark and angry within the carnival. The air grew colder, and the shadows around them deepened. Suddenly, the carnival sprang to life. The rides began to move on their own, and the lights flickered and dimmed a deep Menacing laughter echoed through the halls. The group quickly realized that they were no longer alone. The carnival had come alive, and it was out for revenge. They ran in, trying to find a way out of the twisted maze of the malevolent carnival. But the carnival seemed to be toying with them, leading them down dead in paths and confusing twists. As they turned a corner, they found themselves face to face with a demonic-looking clown, its eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. The clown let out a terrifying scream, and the group scattered. They soon realized that they were surrounded on all sides by malevolent spirits, the angry souls of those who had been trapped within the carnival for years. The group tried to fight back, but their weapons had no effect on the spirits. They were hopelessly outnumbered, and it seemed like there was no way out. Just when all hope seemed lost, a figure appeared from the shadows. It was a woman, dressed in black rose and wielding a staff. She spoke words of power, and the spirits recoiled, screaming in agony. The woman beckoned to the group, leading them through the twisting halls of the carnival with a sure sense of purpose. They followed her, trusting in her abilities to keep them safe. 
As they ran, they could feel the carnival's power weakening. The ride slowed down, and the lights flickered out. Finally, they burst through the front gates and into the cool night air. They turned back to look at the malevolent carnival, now shrouded in darkness. The woman spoke a few final words, and the carnival vanished into the night, leaving behind only a memory of terror and malevolence. The group knew that they had faced something truly evil, and that they had been lucky to escape with their lives. But they also knew that they had accomplished something great, and that they had saved countless others from falling victim to the malevolent carnival's dark power. After the terrifying ordeal at the malevolent carnival, the investigators knew that they needed to find out more about the dark force behind it all. They spent weeks researching and gathering information, following every lead and piece of evidence they could find. Finally, they came across a dusty old tome in a forgotten library. The book was written by an ancient sorcerer detailing a powerful ritual that would summon an otherworldly force and bind it to a physical location. The investigators realized that this was the key to the malevolent carnival's dark power. Someone had performed the ritual, summoning an evil entity and binding it to the carnival grounds. They continued to dig and soon discovered that the carnival had been built over an old cemetery, a final resting place for the victims of a horrific plague that had ravaged the area centuries ago. It was the perfect place to perform the ritual, as the restless spirits of the dead would only add to the power of the summoning. But who could have performed? such a dark and dangerous ritual. And for what purpose? The investigators soon discovered a connection between the carnival and a powerful and wealthy businessman who had been using the carnival as a front for his illegal activities. It seemed that he had hired a group of rogue sorcerers to perform the ritual using the carnival's dark power to further his own goals. The investigators knew that they needed to confront the businessman and put a stop to his evil plans. They prepared for the final showdown, knowing that they would face incredible danger and unimaginable horrors. But they were determined to see justice done and to rid the world of the dark force behind the malevolent carnival once and for all. The investigators made their way to the businessman's mansion, armed with all the knowledge and tools they had gathered over the weeks of their investigation. They knew that they were going up against a powerful and dangerous foe, but they were determined to put an end to his evil plans once and for all. As they approached the mansion, they could see that the businessman had taken steps to protect himself. The building was surrounded by armed guards, and there were wards and enchantments set up to keep intruders out. But the investigators were not deterred. They had come too far and worked too hard to let a few guards and spells stand in their way. They began to work their way through the obstacles, using their skills and knowledge to bypass the guards and break through the wards. Finally, they stood before the businessman himself, surrounded by his loyal minions and armed with powerful magic. The investigators knew that this was the moment they had been working towards, 
and they steeled themselves for the final battle. The businessman sneered at them, confident in his own power and the strength of his magic. He had no idea of the determination and skill of the investigators, nor the depth of their knowledge of the dark forces at play. The battle was fierce and intense, with the magic flying back and forth and the investigators using all of their skills and knowledge to hold their own against the businessman and his minions. But in the end, the investigators prevailed. They were able to break through the businessman's defenses and defeat him and his minions once and for all. With the businessman's defeat, the dark force behind the malevolent carnival was finally vanquished. The investigators had solved the mystery and saved countless lives from the evil that had lurked at the heart of the carnival. As they walked away from the businessman's mansion, the investigators knew that they had done something truly heroic. They had faced unimaginable horrors and had come out the other side as true champions of the light. The investigators returned to their respective homes and offices, exhausted but proud of what they had accomplished. They had saved countless lives and put an end to a malevolent force that had been plaguing the community for years. But the aftermath of their battle was not something that they could ignore. Many of the people who had been affected by the malevolent carnival were left with deep scars, both physical and emotional. The investigators knew that they had to do something to help these people, to ease their pain and help them heal. They organized a support group for those who had been affected by the carnival, providing a safe space for people to share their stories and find comfort in each other's experiences. They also reached out to local mental health professionals and offered their services to anyone who needed them. But the investigators knew that their work was not done. They had uncovered a network of dark magic that had been operating in their community for years. And they knew that there were likely other forces at play that they had yet to uncover. They continued to investigate following leads and searching for clues that would lead them to the root of the evil that had plagued their town. It was a difficult and dangerous task, but they were committed to seeing it through to the end. And as they worked, they knew that they were not alone. They had each other and they had the knowledge and skills that they had gained from their experiences with the malevolent carnival. They were ready for whatever dark forces lay ahead, knowing that they had the strength and determination to face them head on. As time passed, life in the town slowly returned to normal. The malevolent carnival was nothing more than a memory, a cautionary tale that parents would tell their children for generations to come. The investigators continued their work, but it became increasingly difficult to find any new leads. The dark magic that had once permeated the town seemed to have vanished, leaving behind only a lingering sense of unease. Despite this, the investigators remained vigilant, knowing that they could never truly let their guard down. They continued to hold support groups for those affected by the carnival, and they were always available to help anyone who needed it. But life had changed for the investigators as well. They had seen things that most people could never imagine. 
and they had experienced a level of danger that few could comprehend. They knew that they could never go back to the lives they had led before, that they could never fully shake the memories of what they had seen and done. And yet, in some ways, they had found a new sense of purpose. They knew that they had a responsibility to protect their community, to stand against the forces of evil that would inevitably arise. It was a heavy burden, but one that they were willing to bear. As they looked out over the town from the roof of their office building, the investigators couldn't help but feel a sense of pride. They had saved their community, and they had done it together. They knew that they would always be there for each other, no matter what the future held. The malevolent carnival may have been a dark chapter in the town's history, but it had also brought the investigators together in a way that nothing else could. And for that, they were grateful. Years passed, and the town moved on from the malevolent carnival. It became a distant memory, a story that was told to new residents with a sense of caution. The investigators continued to do their work, but they knew that their experience with the carnival had changed them forever. They had seen things that had challenged their beliefs, and they had come face to face with the darker side of humanity. But they had also seen the power of community and the strength that could be found in standing together against evil. And that was something that they would never forget. As the investigators approached retirement age, they knew that they needed to pass on their knowledge and experience to a new generation. They began holding seminars and training sessions, sharing their stories and insights with those who were just beginning their careers in the field of paranormal investigation. And in doing so, they ensured that the legacy of the malevolent carnival would live on. They knew that evil would always exist in the world, but they also knew that there were good people willing to stand against it. As they looked back on their lives, the investigators felt a sense of accomplishment. They had made a difference in their community, and they had helped to make the world a better place. And as they passed the torch on to the next generation of investigators, they knew that the fight against evil would continue, and that they would always be a part of it. Despite the passing of time and the efforts of the investigators, there were some who believed that the malevolent carnival was still out there, waiting for its next victims. Strange sightings and eerie occurrences were still reported in the town, and some claimed that the carnival had reappeared in other parts of the world, always with the same twisted, demonic rides and malevolent atmosphere. Rumors circulated that those who had been unfortunate enough to visit the carnival had been cursed, and that the curse would follow them for the rest of their lives. Some even claimed that the curse had affected the investigators themselves, that they had become obsessed with the carnival and that they could never truly escape its influence. Despite the skepticism of some, there were those who believed that the curse was real that the malevolent carnival was a gateway to a dark and malevolent world that could never truly be closed. And so, they continued to search for the carnival, to try and understand its secrets and to unravel the mystery that surrounded it. But as they delved deeper into the darkness, 
They knew that they were risking their very souls, for the malevolent carnival was not just a place, but a state of mind, a gateway to a world of malevolence and despair. And as they continued their search, they knew that they might never find the answers they sought, and that they might become trapped in the curse forever. The investigators knew that they had to do something to put an end to the curse of the malevolent carnival once and for all. They had spent their entire lives trying to understand the carnival and its malevolent power, and now it was time for them to act. They gathered their equipment and made their way to the location where the carnival had last been sighted. As they approached, they could feel the malevolent energy radiating from the twisted rides and demonic structures. With grim determination, they entered the carnival, their flashlights piercing the shadows as they moved deeper into the darkness. Suddenly, they heard a cackling laughter, and the demonic rides began to move of their own accord. The investigators stood their ground, their weapons at the ready. As they prepared for the final showdown, the atmosphere grew more and more intense. As the investigators fought their way through wave after wave of demonic creatures, they had seen things that most people could never imagine, but they refused to back down. As the final showdown approached, the investigators knew that this would be their last chance to end the curse of the malevolent carnival. They drew their weapons, stealing themselves for the battle ahead. With a final surge of energy, they charged forward their weapons flashing in the dim light of the carnival. The demonic rides and twisted structures trembled and groaned as the investigators struck them, and the malevolent energy began to dissipate. And finally, with a final burst of light, the curse was broken. The investigators stood in the stillness their hearts pounding with adrenaline as they surveyed the remains of the carnival. It was over. The curse of the malevolent carnival had been defeated, and the investigators could finally rest easy, knowing that they had put an end to the malevolent power that had haunted their town for so long. As they made their way back to their homes, they knew that they had achieved something truly remarkable. They had faced the very embodiment of evil and had emerged victorious. And as they looked up at the stars, they knew that they had done something that would be remembered for generations to come. For they had saved their town from the malevolent power of the carnival and had proven that there was always hope in the face of darkness. Thank you so much for your attention. Subscribe to the channel. See you soon.